Thinking the battle was almost over, the genie doubled his efforts. Magical energy from Meriwether's wands crashed into him. A last ditch effort on Meriwether's part. But the Ifrit just shrugged it off. With a triumphant yet eerily monotone cry, it released Meriwether, letting her slump over. The genie then brought its hands up above its head and formed a circle with its fingers. An enormous ball of pure burning light formed in the middle of that circle, which the genie held in his hands for a moment, savoring his victory. Then it launched the light ball straight at the Fairy Queen, except she wasn't there. Jack blinked and looked again, but Meriwether was completely gone. The ball of light passed right through the spot where she'd been, incinerating a swath of forest at least a mile long in its wake. Above him, the genie didn't seem to know where Meriwether was any more than Jack did. It glanced around, searching for its missing opponent, but found no one. Finally, as if to eliminate all options, it looked straight up. Just as blue cloth the size of the sky fell straight on top of the genie. The blue cloth covered it if its head first before settling over its body and its arms. The sides of the cloth coming together at the bottom of the genie's smoke base. Within seconds, the Ifrit's entire body was enclosed by the blue covering. First one, then the other of the genie's hands cut through the cloth, while its head pushed furiously against the top of the cloth, trying to break out. Before the genie's head could break through though, the cloth began to shrink, slowly at first, then faster and faster. Even as the genie endeavored to free itself, Meriwether steadily reduced both their sizes, shrinking as quickly as she'd grown. And Jack was ready. He grabbed the mirror from May's hand, then ran back to the spot where the princess had stood just a minute ago. A spot right beneath the steadily shrinking Ifrit and Fairy Queen. There, he lifted the mirror above his head, just as May had. Merryweather! he shouted as loudly as he could. What might have been an ethereal laugh from the Fairy Queen floated into his ear. The genie seemed to realize what was going on now, and frantically tried to escape. But it was too late. With a rush like the tornadoes of a moment ago, the Ifrit and Meriwether began swirling around and around. The point of their combined cyclone aimed directly at the mirror. When the tip of the genie and fairy queen tornado hit the hole in the mirror's glass, Jack almost fell over. The mirror suddenly weighed a dozen times its usual weight. Jack's legs buckled under him, and his arms strained as they never had before as the mirror pushed down on them harder and harder. Above him, the Fairy Queen couldn't do anything to help as she was struggling to keep the genie in place while she pulled them both into the mirror, and Jack couldn't afford to drop it. One misstep could give the genie the distraction it needed, but there was no way he could hold the mirror up for much longer. And May was at his side, grabbing one side of the mirror. Philip took the other side with a curt nod, and suddenly the weight was bearable. All three braced themselves as Meriwether slowly pulled the shrieking genie back into its prison. 
The Magic Mirror. To Jack, the process felt like it took hours. The two majestic creatures swirling around in an endless cyclone of rage and supernatural energy. The genie fighting for its freedom. The fairy queen struggling to save the lives of three teenagers. But in reality, it wasn't more than a few seconds before the genie let out one final shriek and Meriwether sucked them both back into the mirror. And just like that, the mirror was its normal weight again. Without the heft to balance against, all three of them lost their footing. Philip tumbled to the ground while me and Jack both fell to their knees. Jack managed to hold on to the mirror as he fell, narrowly saving it from further damage by hitting the cracked and broken ground. After taking a breath, Jack rose shakily to his feet, then brought the mirror up to his chest and held it so that they could all see what was happening. All the cracks had disappeared as if they never existed, while the hole from the crossbow's arrow had been filled in with what looked like a small piece of blue stained glass. Oh, Meriwether, Philip said softly. Dropping to his knees and bowing his head. May though stared deep within the mirror, her brow furrowed. She squinted her eyes a bit, then reached down and tapped the prince on his shoulder. Look, she told him, pointing into the mirror. There's, there's something in there. And then, as if she didn't even realize she was doing it, May reached into her pocket, took out the crown necklace, and pushed it back into the top of the mirror. The now familiar green smoke filled the glass, but before it could cover the entire mirror, blue bands of light shot out from behind it and wrapped themselves completely around the green smoke in several rings. She got him, May said softly. She looked at Jack, and he saw that her eyes were wet. Jack nodded. She really did, he said, finding that he suddenly had no energy. But it's not like she's gone, right? Maybe we can still get her out. That's right, Philip said, gently touching the glass. He stared into it for a moment, then raised an eyebrow. Meriwether, he said, then cleared his throat and repeated her name in a voice that was loud enough to have been heard across the clearing. The mirror swirled, blue ribbons fighting with green smoke as both tried to push toward the front. Then for the briefest of instances, Meriwether's face appeared. The fairy queen looked awful. Her beautiful face bubbled in and out of focus. And the look in her eyes made it clear that she was in pain as she continued to fight within the mirror. The fairy queen locked eyes with Philip for a brief moment, then mouthed one word, but Jack couldn't recognize it. And then she was gone, the swirling green surrounding her and pulling her back into the mirror's depths. Philip winced, then slowly pulled May's crown necklace off the mirror. He handed her the necklace, then turned to face them, the mirror hanging limply from his hand. The fairy in May's hair silently cried. 
her little body racked by noiseless tears. I heard Meriwether, the prince said. I heard her within my head. She told me, she told me a name. A name? Jack said. Or what? Someone to help her? May asked. I believe so, Philip said, and then shook his head. Though, why this individual? Of all the beings in the world. Jack waited for him to finish, but the prince just trailed off. Impatiently, Jack cleared his throat. When that didn't work, he whacked Philip on the arm. The name, Jack said, his irritation growing. Philip sighed, his eyes haunted as he looked at Jack. Malevolent, he said. The name she told me was Malevolent. Malevolent, May said. Who's that? Jack shook his head. He'd never heard the name either. She's dead, growled a voice behind them. They all glanced over in surprise to find a very healthy-looking Wolf King staring at them with his glowing red eyes. At least she will be once I get older.